A warm welcome to our next webinar here at uh, JFD uh, Brokers and also in the name of JFD Brokers, a warm welcome to everybody out there. Um, yeah, today is the 22nd of March 2018. Uh, seven o'clock at least the German time wherever you are but uh, it's good to have you here within that webinar and I hope that everybody is doing well. My name Stefan Prolichowski is already speaking but today I'm not alone. We will have another speaker here as well at least um, from time to time he will be there. Uh, that's very nice to have Jens here uh, as well so that's very good. Jens you are there? Uh, yes, I'm here. I, I uh, right now I felt a little like I was um, introduced uh, from from Michael Buffer. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> it sounded sort of like that. <laughs> That's really great. Yeah. Um, hello, also from my end. So I'm um, I'm really happy to be here. And uh, yes, uh, nevertheless, Stefan is the one who will guide through the webinar, and I will from uh, one or the other time then just uh, uh, yeah answer some questions from his hand. Let's say. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Jens. Yeah, today we have a special topic. Uh, today it's about professional trading, the JFD basket portfolio. And honestly, I'm a little bit proud to have that webinar today. And I think Jens has the same opinion because what we present here today is, um, is a great stuff. And it's really something which has to do with a long history, a long history of work of what we have done during the last couple of years even. And yeah, you will see that today's webinar has two aspects. On the one hand, honestly, yeah, we talk about a product. That's right. But on the other hand, uh, you will have the opportunity to learn two specific strategies within that basket portfolio which we trade but we go into all the details of those two strategies and I announced already that we offer that everybody can have um, ebooks about those uh, strategies as well so just maybe um, write down already my email address uh, down there <clears throat> you see it S. Friedrichowski, really complicated last name, at jfdbrokers.com. And uh, um, I will make sure that you will get those uh, in depth descriptions of uh, the two strategies. So, and on the other hand, what will be topic for today as well is if you are trading and you have several trading strategies, you may ask yourself, hey, how to weight them, how to manage my risk, and those kind of topics. Uh, we will touch today, so hopefully interesting for everybody out there. Um, before I start, I have always to show once uh, at least uh, that uh, slide here. It's our risk disclaimer. Of course, it's telling you that uh, whenever you trade, you trade for your own. So later I will talk about specific trading strategies and, and will introduce them in detail. But finally, if you trade them, of course, it's your risk. It's your turn. Uh, and uh, your responsibility. Um, already saying that um, just reminds me to, to tell you that you will always find the recordings of this webinar on the JFD YouTube channel. Just press JFD YouTube, then you will automatically be guided to our YouTube channel and you will find the recordings of this webinar as well as all the other webinars um, from Jens, from me, from other colleagues at JFD. Very interesting topics, but that's the way where you find those. So a little bit more in detail. Um, I would like to touch the following um, um, questions and and things to be discussed. So what is really behind that JFD basket portfolio? And um, on the one hand, a product, yes, but there's much, much more behind that. And first of all, <coughs> uh, we have to talk about who is behind the JFD basket portfolio. Uh, as always, there are people around and they are doing um, hopefully a good job um, and uh, at least uh, we do it I think quite well but anyhow you will see and uh, you will see results even long-term histories life histories uh, for for um, our account and that is one we mark I do from time to time in any any um, webinar if anybody is talking about trading strategies the first question you should ask is show me your um, account statement and only if somebody is able to do that and is willing to do that I think you should listen further so that's the key question 
to have clear facts and um, account statement is everything. Um, finally, when it comes to trading, of course, we will show everything about that. So I would like to share with you a little bit more of the details. Uh, so how do we trade? What kind of trading strategies are there discretionary elements or is everything automated? So uh, that we really know about every strategy in uh, our portfolio. And that shows you already that we go completely transparent about that um, JFD basket portfolio. And yeah, that's exactly how JFD works, just fair and direct. So transparency is key. Two strategies will be shown in detail. Um, and uh, the one or the other might already know them, but uh, it's the breakout systems and the ducks, they are weak seasonal. Um, two quite simple, but very successful strategies. <clears throat> and you will learn everything in detail about those two as well. But then it comes to another key question or key task when you do um, portfolio trading or if you are really trading professional, that is the main question of how to manage the risk. It's to have profitable strategies is the one thing you need, definitely. But without the right risk management, the right portfolio allocation, you can ruin even profitable trading strategies and once again we go transparent that means we share with you exactly how we manage the risk of that um, jfd basket portfolio and finally of course i will tell you a little bit about how you may participate uh, into that uh, portfolio and give you some more specific details on that first question who is behind um, the JFD basket portfolio. You see already here two pictures, but um, at least uh, there I would like to mention uh, a few others um, which are not here right now. Um, uh, two people from JFD as well, that is um, Plamen and uh, Mohamed um, out of uh, JFD headquarters. And um, yeah, just one name additionally, because later you will see that we trade automatically as well. So we need expert advisors and uh, those are done by Peter Müller. But that's uh, just as an addition. But the main traders for the JFD basket portfolio, that's exactly uh, Jens and myself. But I think it's better that uh, Jens, you introduce yourself by your own. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, probably um, some have, have already heard about me in one or the other way. Uh, so uh, currently I'm the uh, global head of research and education at JFD Brokers. Um, uh, beside my uh, um, work as a, as a trader, um, I uh, went out on my own in uh, 2016. Um, before that, I was five and a half year, I think. Um, the head of research of Germany, Austria, and Switzerland at another big broker. Um, some of you might probably know um, FXCM, even though I was managing the daily FX project in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, and uh, made this um, yeah one of the, the biggest projects here in Germany. And in fact, with this, uh, many other similar projects that other brokers uh, started. Um, and uh, yeah, then at... In 2016, I, I finally decided that's probably um, uh, a good idea to go out on my own, uh, try something on top of that beside doing market research. And um, together with JFD Brokers, based on the um, what Stefan already mentioned, uh, being fair and direct um, and being 100% uh, transparent, something which I already all the time um, when I when I uh, worked in this or during I worked in this industry, um, uh, put above anything else, everything else. Um, yeah, I, I decided then to to work together with JFD, and uh, JFD asked me. Um, so in fact, this is uh, by the way a story probably only a few know, but I was already trading live with JFD um, during my, my time at another broker, uh, which is a quite clear sign um, what I think about uh, JFD as a broker, obviously. And um, then JFD decided or said, well, are you probably interested also in managing clients' money? Um, JFD has a, has a, um, a portfolio management license, so it's allowed to offer um, solutions like managed accounts. And I was like, yes, that's uh, probably a very, very good way to start 
because this is very similar to what Stefan said. Um, there are many analysts, especially out there, um, who never ever showed their account statements or offered something like a managed account, mainly due to the fact that most of them are better analysts than traders. And um, yeah, so this is where it all started. And uh, we are right now about to make the next step here with this, um, let's call it a project, uh, the JFD Basket Portfolio Project, um, which I'm also very proud to be a part of as a, as a trader now. And um, being, uh, yeah, hopefully, or I, I can hopefully add um, a lot of value to this to this portfolio in uh, terms of uh, positive um, performance then, which I hopefully can deliver. So far it works out well. Let's just hope that I can keep this up, yes. Perfect, thank you very much. And I have to add something as well, uh, because um, you later will see that, uh, as Jens already mentioned, uh, starting um, that kind of account already 2016, uh, we will look into the history of um, that account in detail. So, and it's going north, which is perfect. Uh, and uh, yeah, you will learn about um, how Jens managed uh, exactly that history uh, in a few minutes. A little bit about myself. Yeah, Stefan Friedrichowski, you know my name and uh, I have a totally different background, uh, nothing uh, originally with um, trading. Um, yeah, I'm a physician and um, a totally different background, but you you know from my other webinars that that is a kind of view on on um, market stocks and uh, prices. It's more mathematically and statistically driven, and all those kind of strategies are exactly uh, out of yeah uh, that rules and derived uh, yeah from from analysis of histories, uh, looking for for patterns, looking for specific movements, and um, yeah drawing the right conclusions of how you can transfer any idea into a profitable trading strategy. So that's uh, how I work and I do it uh, since a couple of years. And uh, yeah, it's uh, perfect to be with JVD in that project. So that's that are the traders behind. So it's not only something, it's not a brochure telling you anything. No, nope. there are real living people behind and that's good. So. But now let's go directly into the basket portfolio and some key facts about that because it has already a, a history. And the JFD basket portfolio is uh, what I would call a quite conservative investment product. And uh, that product uh, is targeting for private and institutional investors. Um, and we have already uh, a, yeah, a lot of them um, under management and uh, therefore we have those kind of results. <laughs> What we have done uh, now a little bit more than a month ago, we changed um, some more details and um, yeah, that has been adding a couple of new strategies to um, the JFD basket portfolio and um, to have yeah, a broad portfolio means we have um, diversification and that's uh, even better and that's what we are doing. You see already some key numbers here. So finally, what we decided is to say, okay, um, for the total amount of money we manage, 80% is um, being traded automatically and 20% discretionary. And especially the latter one <laughs> is uh, that one which uh, is, uh, let's call it Jens trading because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, quite well, it's good. It's uh, always, uh, I'm lucky to see those trades, uh, how he's managing um, those kind of activities. But uh, yeah, you, in a few minutes, you will learn about that uh, much more than I can talk about that. The, the rest is um, part of uh, automatically trading strategies. And what we do, we trade, we trade Forex indices and uh, GOAT CFDs. Um, so more or less a complete portfolio. Up to now, we don't trade um, um, uh, any stocks, but let's see. In total, we have nine individual strategies. So it's a real big portfolio and we target for moderate return with low risk. And as you see already here in the statement, um, the performance numbers may look small, but have in mind, on the other hand, our drawdowns are extremely small as well. So um, 
it's exactly what we try to achieve. It's a conservative investment product, stability first, and uh, not um, promising any 1% uh, uh, performance uh, hit in, in two months. No, that is not our style. Um, and uh, we are yeah, looking for a moderate return with low risk. And you see, it worked well already in the history. And uh, let's see we, how we go further. As you know, um, our hist historical numbers are no guarantees for the future. But as you see what we are doing exactly, I think uh, hopefully it will create some additional trust in what we are doing here as well. I mentioned we keep it open. So we are completely transparent. Here is a list of strategies we trade uh, within the JFD basket portfolio. And um, it, it starts with uh, the discretionary uh, trades from, from Jens and then the, comes the, the eight automatic strategies. And the one or the other may realize, wow, I know more or less every of those. Yes, they have been part of our uh, webinars during the last uh, 11 months. And that's right. Uh, it's as I always uh, tell you, um, I'm not only um, talking about web, uh, trading strategies, I trade them. And um, we take exactly those uh, histories for that JFD basket portfolio because they are, have already been traded in live accounts and uh, therefore we can show up uh, our history. So two of them will be uh, later, a little bit later, um, I will touch them much more in detail. That's the breakout Euro Japanese yen and uh, go for the Ducks Day a week because they are quite simple, easy to tell, and you can trade them by your own as well. Or yeah, you can finally decide for the overall basket. But anyhow, um, let's really start with uh, trading details or looking to real account statements and um, yeah that is something I can do here quite easily because um, we can look to the complete history of the account um, here live to buy FX blue to that account and uh, you see um, there's uh, quite well moderate um, return and um, and it looks well, it goes straight up, straight north. And that is exactly what we are doing. And what you see here is the history since, let's have a look, um, September 2016. And um, most of the part here has been traded um, during um, Jens activities when he has done everything alone. Um, and you see already quite well results. And I think it's a good time that we learn a little bit more about your discretionary, uh, discretionary approach of how you trade and what you trade. Uh, maybe Jens, you can tell us a, little, a few more details on those uh, discretionary trades in the JFD basket portfolio. Uh, yes, sure. Um, uh, so in fact, um, as already said, uh, probably some of you have heard me already um, uh, in my uh, morning meetings. I'm holding on a daily uh, on a daily basis. Um, you can follow them in the YouTube channel from JFD Brokers. So every morning, 10:30 a.m. GMT. Um, but also probably some of uh, um, the audience here at FX Street uh, just joined us. Um, so uh, several people there on a every Thursday. Yes, it's always Thursday. Um, there is a, a live trading session uh, from the U.S. market opening, and um, most of them have heard about um, my, my my trading style and what I'm doing. So, um, in fact, um, it's always that something I mentioned already yesterday in the German uh, version of this uh, webinar here uh, that I have to smile a little when I hear discretionary since uh, or discretionary trading in general because um, discretionary trading. Um, has all the time some kind of, let's call it, um, uh, um, um, as, as kind of a freestyle touch. Like, okay, rule of thumb, mm, probably market is going up or down. Let's just go along today and see what um, what we get to see. Then some basic um, technical knowledge, like higher highs, higher lows. Let's wait for a pullback to form a highs and then go along from there or the other way around. Um, and that's it. And in fact, that's uh, not the case in my trading. But um, so the main traded asset, and this is something you can already see in this uh, diagram here, a little uh, um, at, the, at the bottom, it's uh, it's the DAX. Uh, so um, the, the the German um, 
index. And um, the strategy I'm trading is, um, in fact, an automated strategy, which I know, which has a positive expected value. Let's let's call it a basic strategy, where I already know that it uh, makes money. I, I just need to to push the button, let's say. And um, after a series of, of, of trades over a longer uh, time frame, um, usually based on the um, history, the result should be positive. And now um, what I do is I try to optimize this um, expected value, in fact. So uh, let's assume uh, the expected value tells you that the strategy is making, let's say, 10 cents per euro you risk. Um, so uh, that said, it does not mean that uh, we are aiming for 10 cents while risking one euro, but uh, Making 10 cents per euro risk means you're making um, on average per every year, um, euro you risk on every trade 10 cents uh, or let's let's take clean numbers like 1000 euro risk 10 cents you make for each euro risk that means 100 euro per trade on average you make and um, that means it doesn't matter if it's a winning or a losing trade and um, but you're making these 100 euros per trade on average and now my target is in fact to optimize this expected value so for example um, try to increase this expected value to 11 cents or if you're taking the risk of 1000 euros making 110 euros so um, generating an even higher profit and making this whole strategy more profitable um, and therefore let's probably have a look at uh, uh, today's uh, DAX performance um, so um, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, Stefan has a yeah, chart probably I, I, I can I can do it because today is a is a beautiful day to talk about uh, the basket uh, in fact I, I just found out I, I haven't checked it so I'm not looking at the performance every uh, every second or so but I just uh, checked the results here at um, FX blue and I just found out that this uh, will uh, so so far and tomorrow is a is the last trading day of the week uh, nevertheless based on our risk parameters we have a very good chance I think to uh, to make a very very solid uh, result for the week probably it will be the most successful week since the inception of uh, of this uh, basket portfolio and if you look at the development here in the DAX um, you can see that there's a clear and, and very nice trend structure on the downside and um, so now the thing is that I already closed my position or let's put it that way I scaled out of the trade um, once the market accelerated on the downside and uh, the overall result is that currently um, I am out of this uh, DAX trade of this DAX short trade at 12,075 um, so which means 12, 12 0.75. So now, if the market um, will close above that level, let's assume probably uh, 12,100, that means that I turned out a 25 point better result than the basic strategy um, for the day. So if the day closes at 12,100 points. On the other hand, it means that if now, for example, the DAX is uh, falling further, and in fact, I have to say, I, I hope really so much that it will fall further. You can see here, these are real trades, uh, which are traded in the basket. These are short trades in the DAX, and I, I just hope that the market will collapse from now, because it would mean that those trades, which are still open here on the DAX, um, would turn an even higher profit for the portfolio, mean more performance. But um, now, it just just assume that the market will close, let's say, at 12,050 points. That means that I closed out the position at 12,075, and the result I generated is 25 points worse than what the system would have generated. And so what I do is, in fact, I run the strategy, the basic strategy, on a demo account, and I just collect the data at the end of the day and look where um, the, the market closed then, respectively the strategy closed out the trade. And um, I put this in relation to my result and then I have a, um, a single um, column in my Excel file and I just um, calculate the difference and do this for um, a series of trades. And um, so far I'm doing quite well even though I'm trading currently below the expected value, and that was mainly due to uh, the high volatility at the beginning of the month of February. Um, and it wasn't that I, um, that where it's, it's not that I have um, cr um, um, generated a negative result here. In fact, I, I turned out the profit um, in this high volatile market environment, but the system performed better than I did. 
Um, and uh, the reason is that I didn't feel comfortable trading in such a, uh, let's call it low liquidity market environment or in a market environment which is showing such a thin order book where market from time to time, and some of you might remember that, are um, spiking 100 points higher and then 100 points lower and that. And um, I usually step back from such environments. Um, and, and yeah, again, don't feel comfortable trading that. Um, and uh, nevertheless, turned out the profit so far. And yeah, that's in, uh, in a rough way how you can imagine my discretionary uh, style of trading. So in fact, it's uh, discretionary in terms of the exit, but um, the entry into the trade is uh, purely automated. So the system is, gen uh, system is trading, respectively generating a signal, entering the market, and then it's on me to um, optimize the overall expected value of this uh, basic strategy. Yeah, and that's it. Perfect. It's always nice to listen to that kind of approach because uh, it's a very well combination of um, those two aspects, completely automatic plus, um, yeah, what we now always call the discretionary touch, uh, those additional decisions in order to, to uh, minimize risk, to uh, outperform what's uh, as the strategy logic uh, original behind. And uh, I can tell you, I've seen those results for the last couple of months now. And um, what Jens has been able is yeah, to smooth the equity quite well Uh, so drawdowns lower, and um, even as he mentioned, um, the total profit was a little bit less. But um, let's say the, the the drawdowns have been much less, and that's perfect. The other thing, just since we have now here an open chart, you can see <clears throat> that there are still three duck trades open, um, all short, uh, as you can see. And um, yeah, the three duck trades here, uh, I can tell you a little bit about. Uh, the first one, which has been opened already here uh, at uh, that level, that is a duck day week trade. Um, that is a strategy we, we will have in a minute. And uh, you see two other short trades here those are um, open range breakout trades uh, to the south in this case and there has been already a third trade um, ducks um, Uh, short, uh, but that is already uh, closed. Uh, it was a perfect trade. I think it was closed more or less exactly uh, at, at that level here below. So worked well, and we have already here that kind of diversification because, uh, as Jens mentioned, he has been short. That the other breakout strategies finally turned out to go short. Okay, but sometimes we have even the situation that we have both um, short and long trades. And finally, sometimes it even happens that both come to a positive end. And that's always amazing. Uh, works out very well. Good. So we know exactly what Jens is doing um, now. And uh, that is the most part of the history here. Let me turn a little bit more short-term history now. Um, since everything is directly done um, in uh, in that account. So that is now a short-term history of all the strategies um, in this account. I show you later another account uh, with a more long-term history of all the eight other uh, strategies. But what I would like to mention here is you see it runs smooth. We don't have the, uh, huge drawdowns. I know the history here is not that long, but you see how we trade it. That is risk management and will be uh, our next uh, part. Um, but before going there, I want to show you here, we have eight uh, additional strategies. They have been traded for a longer period already. And um, just Adding up those eight strategies comes to um, that kind of performance here. Um, let me show it for in a, in a second. So here we have a chart. Uh, that is a performance of those eight other strategies, small accounts um, in this case, and um, just adding up different kind of accounts, different size you will see, and going north perfectly. So. And now let's have a step further. So you see we have those eight additional strategies and each of them have a, a history uh, in a live trading account like this Euro Japanese Yen one. Um, 
I have to apologize that, that it looks like this one here, but that is purely because of MT4. Um, MT4 is uh, from time to time adding up old trades and puts them in one trade, and uh, then it looks like this one here. But you know that this account has started at 1,000, uh, has already more than 20% profit, and that looks, once again, quite smooth, straight, uh, to the north, small drawdowns. So that's exactly how we would like to see any uh, kind of trading strategy. It's trading your Japanese yen purely, nothing else. And you see how it can work out here. And um, that is already uh, more than or uh, about one year history uh, for, for that um, specific strategy. We will talk about that. How is it running and how do we our trades in for example, that strategy. But before doing that, you see we have a couple of breakout strategies. We have the Ducks Day a Week strategy we will discuss. And uh, we have what we call internally Big Ben Portfolio. Uh, that's uh, about 15 individual Forex pairs we trade uh, in a certain way. And then uh, you might remember other webinars we have had that we use some edge that we use some probability advantage like specific emas uh, which one we follow or we do counter therefore the strategy is called the ema counter or we do use even power candles as a, a probability edge and out of that we do some kind of uh, position trading and uh, you remember that we have had those in our webinars as well but now going a little bit more in detail because we want to be transparent and it's always nice that you can learn something during the webinars so the next two uh three slides is specifically um uh, for those uh, two strategies let's start with open range breakout so open range breakout is um in principle easy to easy to do strategy and uh, it's quite powerful just as an example how it in principle works and then we come to the absolute details of euro, euro japanese yen <clears throat> strategy within that jfd basket portfolio open range breakout strategies always start with two point in time so two to um start time and an end time like here midnight <clears throat> and eight o'clock in the morning so we have a time range of those eight hours. And then during that time, we have a maximum and a minimum, which is in this case here, you can't see it uh, that well, but um, you can believe me the minimum uh, is here. So the time range creates a price range. And that is finally that gray box here. And when it comes to the end time of um, that range that's here eight o'clock in the morning then we place two orders we place a buy stop order on the upper limit and a sell stop order on the lower end and then we wait we wait until one of the two is triggered in my case it's the short trade and immediately we would cancel the long trade. So the strategy originally works with um, the logic of one cancels the other OCO. By the way, the stop loss of those uh, pending orders is always the opposite side of the range. So for the sell stop order here, the stop loss is here. And for the um, buy stop order, the stop loss is here. Then, as always, when somebody is talking about a trading strategy, he is choosing a picture where everything went well. So price go, went further uh, to the south and is hitting my take profit um, a little bit after lunchtime. By the way, take profit. Okay, <clears throat> where's the take profit in that picture? It's at a risk reward ratio of exactly one. That means that the distance from here to here is the same than the distance from here to here. So my my profit is one R and my risk is one R. Therefore a risk reward ratio in this case from one. That's the basic logic of any breakout strategy. There might be a little bit more complicated finally, or you have additionally uh, additional parameters but in principle they have three degrees of freedom 
starting time, end time, and that take profit multiplier, or better to say, to say risk reward ratio. There might be others. And we indeed use an EMA as an additional filter because we do not place two orders. We do not place the buy stop and the sell stop order. We put an additional EMA into the chart um, and then we only trade into the direction of, a, of that EMA, meaning if the price is above the EMA, we only trade long and if the price is below, uh, we only trade short. So that's the additional element here for the Euro Japanese Yen open range breakout strategy. And my picture is only an example. The correct and um, perfect times uh, are three o'clock in the morning and all times I present here during the webinar <clears throat> are German times. Uh, so German time zone, uh, including summer and winter time changes. <clears throat> but I always look to my my clock, um, then I have the right time. So the range start time is three o'clock and the range end time is 10 o'clock. Or I always write down 9.59 uh, just to say at 10, we have to start um, placing our orders. The EMA in an H1 chart is um, 11. And the, oh, sorry, that's uh, still German here. Uh, risk reward ratio is 1.7. And now we have an additional question. Hey, um, what if stop loss and take profit is not hit during the day? For that, we have a rule as well. And that means at 10 p.m. we close the trade anyhow. If it's not reaching stop loss or take profit, close it. So we use a time stop. We have no overnight trades, no overnight or over weekend risk. And we don't have any swap costs involved. So that's the one strategy. <clears throat> and it's easy to do and you can do it by your own if you want um, that are the details for that and we have another strategy <clears throat> i um, we have had already in the ducks chart and that is a the strategy which is even simpler because you don't have to do lots of things when you trade that kind of strategy the first thing what you do is you put an EMA into the daily DAX chart. And I, uh, we take a period of 40. And now we we wait for the open of the, um, for the FDAX, which opens at eight o'clock uh, German time. And then we compare. We compare um, the open of uh, the FDAX with the EMA of the previous day. If we are above, we simply call it we are in a bull market and if we are below we simply say okay we have a beer market okay that's a fair definition um, it's just one definition but it works extremely well for exactly that strategy and now it simply de depends on the day of the week therefore we call that strategy a seasonal strategy because we make use of something which repeats and in this case, it's the day of the week. And we have statistically identified specific days which have a bias in a specific direction. And I know from statistical analysis that in a bull market, that Monday, Thursdays, and Fridays are long days, and the other two are short days. And in a beer market, it's exactly vice versa. And the st uh, statistical edge is um, quite huge and therefore we can trade that that profitable uh, in that easy way doing so yeah we have to talk about the trade itself so we open the trade at eight o'clock jump time and now we need a stop loss as for uh, any trade and that stop loss is set uh, 1.1 percent uh, away from the entry and now we simply wait until the end of the day in this case it's once again 10 o'clock um, p.m german time we don't have a take profit, we just close the trade if it have not reached a stop loss before. And that's a complete strategy. And it's that easy and it's extremely profitable. Just that we have a look for that. Uh, let me go back here um, in, to the portfolio. Uh, that is uh, strategy 12. 
and um, now we can have a look for <clears throat> the history here as well. And you see it went up, then slightly down, um, moving upwards once again, quite straight, and that is exactly the time range Jens mentioned already. Um, um, when the DAX has been collapsing, extremely um, doing well for that strategy. So finally, what do we have? We have a monthly growth of uh, more than 1% for that strategy, uh, at least in the history, and that's uh, doing quite well. So, and now the good thing is you may have not got every detail here. Uh, during those two slides or three slides. What we have created, um, and I have more to say uh, what Jens has created, um, he wrote down uh, the two strategies in small ebooks and they are available. So just sending around uh, an email and if you have already Jens email, you can send the email to Jens, of course, as well. Um, or even you just uh, send an email to support of JFD. Then you can have uh, those uh, ebooks for free, and they will look like this one here. Um, that you have the complete strategy a little bit more described, and you have some graphs um, here about history of that and uh, previous um, examples, how they work, and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, you have really the complete picture um, of, and here we have the other one, um, and you see historical graphs uh, for that strategy, backtesting performance um, when they have originally developed, uh, so all the more details about that. <clears throat> and of course, once again, you have the trading details, uh, like on my slides here, what time frames, what uh, EMA values, and so on. So they are all available, and uh, we want to be transparent with our strategies, and those definitely can be traded by your own. Or you later will say, uh, I go directly for the complete basket with all the nine uh, strategies. But that are the two ebooks, um, and you have free access to that. But now it comes to the other important part, and it's a really important part. We are trading a basket, or maybe you are trading a basket of strategies as well by your own trading activities. And then there's a central question, how to manage the risk, how to allocate the weights for the different strategies, which is quite important. And um, and I can tell you a little bit of what we are doing here uh, during the last couple of weeks and months that we really talk about allocating uh, once a week and uh, we we have an in-depth view to everything there but up to now everything is stable so there's no nothing to be changed but how do we come for the original weights of those different strategies and in general, um, I want to present here two kind of approaches how to allocate weights and risk for the single strategies. Um, let me start with the one we did not choose. I come to that later, approach uh, number two. Approach number one might have been that we take those nine strategies. And the good thing is we are not talking about backtest results. No, we are talking about real life results for those nine strategies. And what we of course can do, and uh, the, when I showed uh, the portfolio of the eight automatic strategies, I showed originally exactly what I mean here. We mix them, we are adding them just as they are. And that's the one thing you can do, you, you, you add them up. Uh, the equity lines of those um, individual strategies. But then you can do it a little bit better. You might take nine weighting factors for all the individual strategies, and then you move around with those weighting factors, and you can optimize it then. Um, for example, you look for a minimum drawdown overall at highest profits. That's something you can do. Uh, and you can do it by computer uh, quite well. So it's not a big deal to do it. And of course, if you do it that way, you get really the best result of adding those nine strategies. It's really the best result you can achieve. 
That's their advantage. But there's a disadvantage of that approach. And that the disadvantage is, since you have not that huge uh, statistics, the risk of over-optimization is quite huge. What does it, do I mean here? Think about two strategies. At, at a certain day or a certain month, one strategy is going south, the equity, and the other equity is going north. It's perfect to have equal weight between those two strategies because then the drawdown of the one uh, will be cancelled by uh, the profit of the other. That's right. But what if that does not happen in future as well? At the same point in time and you don't have an expectation about the future. So there's a risk and that risk is over-optimization by just looking to the past of those individual trading strategies. So in fact, it's the best result you can achieve, adding those up with the right uh, weighting factors by simply by, by optimization. But it's not the best way to do. So we did another way. And what we did is we started with defining a maximum allowed loss per day. So that was the original starting point. And what we have in mind is that we are willing to accept a 1% loss for a single day, maximum. And therefore, it's a conservative approach what we are doing here. So, all started with that single num number. And let me go first through uh, my, my list of points here, and then I will show it practically within an Excel sheet that you, do, that you know exactly what I'm talking about here. So, starting with that 1% as a target value, as a maximum loss per day. Since we have a history for all our strategies, we the next point is to, to look what has been in the history the worst day result for any and each single strategy. So we are looking really for the worst case scenario, worst day result of the overall history. And then what we do is we distribute our overall 1% loss, maximum loss we are willing to uh, accept to all the single strategies. And we decided to give 0.2% for the discretionary um, strategies from, from Jens. And uh, finally, for the eight other strategies, uh, it's a 0.1% for uh, each of the eight. So that we, we did simply by a decision. If you are doing that way, you get the weights of the individual strategies within the portfolio totally automatically. It's simply calculation. It's nothing else. And what we are doing, if you do so, then it's extremely conservative because you accept or you anticipate that each strategy has a worst day result at the same point in time. So it's a worst case scenario. Since we are aiming for a conservative approach, that's exactly the way what you should do. I come to that, why that is that worst case and what we can uh, expect in reality or statistically, uh, I will show once again. Just a second. So that you can understand how we, how we did it. Our two examples, um, Euro, Japanese Yen, open range breakout and tax day a week. Uh, I was still here, so already the account number of the live account, of, um, but anyhow. <laughs> and uh, the account size, <clears throat> the current standing, I think that's a couple of weeks old, but anyhow, um, I know the monthly return uh, for for the, those um, two strategies for the history. Um, I know those numbers as well. And now it comes to the most important number. What has been the worst day result for the Japanese yen strategy? 14 euros, 28. Good. I know that number. Then we can translate that number in a percentage value, just dividing that number by the uh, account size. So it has been a minus 1.43%. And now it comes. What was our target for the strategy? 0.1% as maximum loss in the overall portfolio. And then we go for a weight of 7%. Just let me turn that number to, to any other number, 20%. Then you will see, oh, if I would weight that strategy in the overall portfolio with 20%, <clears throat> 
then such a worst error result would give in the overall portfolio a nearly 0.3% uh, loss um, in, in, in that basket. That is unacceptable. We accept only, um, um, sorry, uh, we accept only 0.1% for an individual or each strategy. So the weight is 7% for Euro, Japanese, yen. And you do the same for Dax Day of Week and all the other strategies within that portfolio. Then you get the weights for those individual strategies. What might happen if you do so for, for all the strategies, you might have here a number which is, already, is exceeding 100%, which is still okay because you have a target of 1% maximum loss, which you are willing to accept. So that's the way we did it. And that this is a worst case scenario, I would like to, as always, when you have webinars with me, you get Excel sheets, you know, um, I want to illustrate a little bit further just by some random numbers. Let, let's have a look to column A here. Um, that is, uh, there are random numbers between minus one and plus one. Think about that might be the account change, change of a single strategy. Um, minus one percent up to plus one, plus one percent. So you see random numbers. Column B, just the same, just another account. And now you add those two accounts, really adding them up. In my graph here, <clears throat> you get then that yellow line. And of course, if it comes really worse, then it might be that we have nearly 2%, let's talk about 2% loss at a single day. Yes, that might happen uh, and vice versa. But now it comes to statistics. And when it comes to statistics, then it, yeah, I always know, um, and, and I know that it sounds crazy, but in statistics, one plus one is not two. It's the square root of two, so 1.41. What do I mean? And that is exactly shown here. If you, you calculate the standard deviation of account number A, it's 0.58 in this case. Account number B, it's 0.59. That's the standard deviation of what we have here uh, as a time series. And now adding up the two, it's not the double value. It's 0.83. And you see the ratio I calculated. Hmm. In this case, it's really exactly a square root of two. But uh, let me... Let me um, get uh, fresh numbers here. Uh, just, uh, you see the graph is always changing when I press F9. Uh, we get simply some other numbers, but all are around about 1.4. So one plus one is not two. Statistically, it's square root of two. Doing so for all of our trading strategies, that's what I did here in a quick calculation. So you see, we have eight strategies which, with a maximum loss of 0.1. And we have the ninth, the discretionary, with 0.2. Adding those, according to the same rules, up finally gives a 0.35. And therefore, it's extremely conservative what we are doing. If everything goes wrong, of course, still we might have that minus 1%, but the expectation value for that loss is lower, and that is 0.35. And now let's have a look to the practical results uh, for the last month. And <clears throat> yeah, you see here daily results uh, of each individual day of the, the, the portfolio up to now. And what I calculated here for those days, um, yeah, is the sum of all the days uh, until the day of uh, before yesterday. That's 1.3%. Uh, the best day well, has been 0.6. And the worst day result, you see the number, 0.36. Hmm. What was the calculated number? Hmm. 0.35. Okay, that's um, uh, a little bit nice and funny, but um, because it's not a proof, but uh, it's still meaning we are going worst case scenario. So 
we can always be better than that 1% maximum loss. But that's the logic uh, here behind uh, what we are doing. So it's exactly what we want and that we have a maximum allowed loss per day, and that is 0.1%. So that's the way we did our portfolio allocation and what we did for risk management uh, of um, the overall strategy. And um, yeah, our target is clear. Uh, don't be too risky. Um, so and that's what we are going for. And you can use those kind of calculations and even approach number one for your own as well. So I hope you learned a little bit about how to create a portfolio here and how to manage the risk within that portfolio. And now it comes a question, um, how can I invest? How can I participate here to that? And then you need some additional key figures uh, how to do. Hopefully you get already some interest into the JFD basket portfolio. You still have the chance and you can do uh, go, going for the two strategies. We have uh, um, prepared the, the two uh, ebooks, but maybe you decide, hey, Maybe I want to go or I want to participate to the JFD basket portfolio as well. Then it's quite simple. You simply write an email to the support at jfdbrokers.com and you ask uh, that you want to open an invest account. So it's not a standard account uh, like uh, any other one. It's a so-called invest account for the JFD basket portfolio. <clears throat> and then there are people who will guide you through the process, <clears throat> which is not that complicate. Just a second. There are people who will guide you to that process. What you cannot do is you can not use an existing account and just say, hey, please do my trading in that JFD account. No, um, but the process, if you are already a JFD uh, client, um, then it's uh, just a sub account you open. So the process <clears throat> for getting uh, access to the JFD basket portfolio is a little bit easier. <clears throat> what you have to know is there's a minimum account size uh, if you open an, such an invest account and that number is uh, 2,500 euros, which is still a small number. Think about what we are offering here is something like wealth management. Um, normally those accounts start maybe at 100 K, so 100,000. Or <clears throat> maybe you find somebody already at 20K, uh, but normally not for small accounts. What we can do here is to offer that already for um, small accounts as well. Yeah, and of course, there's a management fee. In this case, it's um, 2%. So it's uh, meant <clears throat> annual, um, but finally, um, paying that management fee is done monthly, but um, it's easier to talk about an annual fee. And there's a performance fee as well, which is uh, 25%. But the good thing is, it's uh, the logic behind is high watermark. If you are not familiar with that kind of principle or that kind of logic, it's quite easy to explain. High watermark means that um, you only pay a performance fee if, <clears throat> if you are reaching new highs in the account. So if your account is going up 10% and then 10% uh, down, <clears throat> um, then 10% up, 10% down, and so on and so forth. So uh, you would have only to pay for, for the first increase <clears throat> if it first goes north uh, and then not any longer because there's no new high in your account. So that's a good thing <clears throat> about high watermark. Um, and uh, that is the performance fee behind. The other good thing is that you can deposit and withdraw uh, money at any time. So um, it's uh, nothing that you have to be invested for minimum time of, uh, uh, let's say, one year. <clears throat> I would recommend to think about time frames like that, but um, there are no restrictions. And the other good thing is, um, yeah, you can have access, you can see the actual standing of that account um, more or less live. Um, you have access to what is called the MyJFD portal. And 
there you can see the actual standing. I, I've been told it's um, updating every five minutes, so it's really more or less um, real time. And you can see additionally all closed trades uh, for um, what has been traded in that um, JFT basket portfolio. So I think <clears throat> it's uh, quite a cool thing and I hope um, you will agree with me for that as well. Yeah, we are already one hour here within that webinar and I hope you, you enjoyed the combination of, um, to some extent, you learned a little bit of, about a product and that product is simply called JFT Basket Portfolio. And I would call it, it's um, something like wealth management for everybody because it's interesting to have something like that already for small accounts as well. <clears throat> but you can benefit from from what's behind. And um, I think nobody else is uh, in that industry that transparent with strategies, logics, risk management like we are. But yeah, once again, that's um, for what JFD stands and it's just fair and direct. You know that we are trading 80% automatically and 20% discretionary, um, which uh, it's a very nice mixer and um, yeah, during the last couple of weeks, and maybe Jens can comment on that as well, uh, to see that uh, live, how that combination works is really amazing. Um, so it has been the perfect decision <clears throat> to do that mixture, uh, doing both, and um, it's, it's really nice uh, to have a look on. Yeah, we have presented here two strategies in detail. You can have access to those um, um, just um, sending an email, <clears throat> then you will get those as an ebook. <laughs> and they are English, so we have them in. Oh, if, if we have still here German guys uh, sitting around, uh, you can have them in German or English, just indicate what language um, you would like. Uh, both is possible. What we are doing here is really we aim for a conservative. Uh, approach and therefore we have a conservative risk management and you know now exactly how we are doing that. I think there are not many wealth management companies who really tell you how they are doing it uh, but we do and that's uh, what uh, we want. Yeah now it's up to you but maybe I think uh, Jens may comment on that here as well hopefully. Uh, yes, yes, I'd, I'd like to add the, the following. Um, uh, I 100% agree. It's uh, it's really amazing. Um, if if, uh, um, if if you are part of this uh, project, if, if you're working in the background here and uh, um, discussing uh, the, the 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 weight of the strategies, uh, risk and money management parameters, it's uh, it's it's amazing to see how professional all this works. And uh, so far, um, the, the performance is, is really outstanding for, for the month of, of March. I think we had something like 2% or so, um, um, which, is, which is really outstanding. Nevertheless, um, I'm long enough in this, in this business and in the markets as a trader to, uh, to thank uh, at the first uh, here, the DAX, uh, the, my main market, to say, to say thank you, DAX, because it's uh, really moving uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a really nice way and in our direction. Um, and uh, 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 yes, so, so all in all, um, as, as uh, uh, Stefan summed it up, it's, it's definitely up to you. I'd really uh, love to hear from you um, uh, via email. Uh, you can you can uh, not only contact Stefan but also me. You can send an email to support at jftbrokers.com to get the ebooks. Um, they're completely for free. There's nothing to hide. It's no big secret which strategies we are trading. Um, uh, and yeah, so that's it for my end. Um, I'm once again really happy to be here. Much appreciated, and uh, being capable to say something it's it's uh, it's an honor. Thank you. Okay, thank you once again. And uh, I just uh, want to share with you once again one, one document here because it's um, underlying uh, what um, what Jens has just mentioned. Um, <clears throat> looking to the DAX, for example, and um, indeed uh, comparing the DAX with the portfolio. Um, that's, uh, you see, oh, I'll make it a little bit larger. Uh, then it's easier to to follow me. It's it's uh, amazing. Look for the the very end here in those blue lines. You see the ducks. Okay, the ducks is outperforming the portfolio, but 
you see how volatile the DAX is going up and north and down and up and so on. It's look for, for that, that uh, decrease within the DAX. What has been done by the portfolio during that time? Increase. Very good. Okay, we know that we can go short, but it's not only um, uh, DAX has been more or less collapsing and uh, portfolio went uh, north, but it's how smooth it goes here. And that's really something um, quite amazing. It's uh, really well. Uh, we don't have that volatility like the DAX itself. We have a smooth and steady increase, and that's exactly what we try uh, to achieve here. Yeah, thank you very much uh, listening here in the webinar and uh, you, you will find the recordings from tomorrow onwards um, on the JFD YouTube channel as well. Um, for me, it was a pleasure to be here, part of that project um, and will be part of that project. Uh, same as Jens and um, so have a nice evening and hopefully see you again for the next uh, webinars. Either Jens, me, Anybody else from JFD, you, you find uh, good webinars um, all around nearly every day. And um, I will be online and think in about two weeks from now, once again, talking about trading strategies. What else? So let's see. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Yeah, have a nice evening from my end, too. Uh, talk to you tomorrow, hopefully. See you and uh, bye bye. Take care.